Okay, church. Y'all ready for this? I don't think you're ready. I'm not ready. Father, we love you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for, Lord, your love, which is never ending. Lord, you are good. You are good. You are good. And we ask, Lord, in this moment, that all that is heard, Lord, that it is heard, Lord, from you, that you would open our ears and our minds and our hearts, Lord, that you would center and align our spirit with yours, Father God, to hear what you would have to say to us and respond to it rightly. For you are faithful and you are good. And the church said, Amen. 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 You know, if you're following it all with the YouTube sermon series and, and going along with each of those, maybe sharing them to a friend or just watching it yourself or visiting on there because you might have missed a Sunday, you might notice in every picture that YouTube takes when that sermon is recorded is it's an image frozen like this. <laughs> Has anybody else seen that? Noticed it? Katie Banks did just this week, and I said, all right, Katie, well, just for the sake of it then, I'm just gonna preach like this <laughs> the whole sermon. How's that sound? You think I can hold my arms up that long? Yeah. Don't test me. <laughs> right? Yeah, so anyway, they're probably just try capturing the most exciting image. They're like, this one looks exciting. That's what we should default as the image. So that must be why. Because I know I'm not doing this all the time, but you go ahead and count just for fun. How many times does Pastor Josh <laughs> go like this? Amen? 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 Well, our series is Let Love Lead. And we have covered two topics already in this area which is let love lead in truth, right? And who is the truth? Jesus, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We can be led into truth in him and through him. And Jesus also prayed in John 17. He said, Lord, sanctify them with your truth. And what did he call the truth? Your word is truth. So are we picking it up? Are we getting into God's word and letting it be central to our lives and foundational that we spend far more time in this literature, in this holy and sacred work of art that is more meaningful than any piece that has ever been done throughout all of mankind's work. This is it. And because it was written through men, through prophets, through the holy hand of God. It is the inspired written scripture to give us a guide, to be a light, that lamp unto our feet because it feels like we live in darkness so much of the time, amen? And the Lord says, so let me guide you in my truth. And last week we talked about let love lead in grace. How many of y'all need some grace even just this last week, right? We're all in small measures and in great measures in need of grace. And thank God that it is ever present, always there, that we can come before our Lord and just say, Lord, you know my heart. You know my messiness. Can I bring this before you in asking for your forgiveness? And what is his ever faithful response? Yes, you may. Yes, you may, because I love you, because I want to have a relationship with you that is so pure and so sacred and so good, right? And that is our God, for he is good. And speaking of God's ever grace and his ever truth that is always present and near us and, and, and available to us. Katie's tacking them. She's tacking them. I went like this again, and she had a smile. She's like... <laughs> you got me, Katie. But God's ever, right, grace that is present and truth that is available. And this week, in this sermon series, we are going to talk about God's faithfulness. Let love lead in 
faithfulness. Now, of all the attributes of God that we've covered thus far in this series, I just have to tell you, this one has been my absolute favorite. It's like each one gets better. God's truth, God's grace, but his faithfulness this week. Because isn't it true, church? When you think of God's faithfulness, and when your mind draws to it, and you begin to comprehend, seek at least to comprehend, the incomprehensible God who is faithful, that our minds should be enraptured and in woe because of how great God's faithfulness is. I mean, there's those songs we can sing in him and in song that we just say, oh man, that is good. That is so true. And one of those is, great is thy faithfulness unto me, unto me, Lord? You are faithful even to me? Yes, the Lord would say in his demonstration in even giving his life on the cross. And that's only one, right? Demonstration of God's faithfulness. We can't count them. They're beyond counting. Even the breath in our lungs right now, God is faithful to supply all he would want us to have in this life he's called us to in these moments, in these times, so that we may live, and not just for ourselves, but for him who is faithful. And I'll, and I'll tell you, because as I was processing this week, this sermon, Lord, where should we go? What should we do? What should we talk about? There were times that I, I just felt the Lord saying, I'll say, Josh, just, just sit down and just dwell upon the goodness and the faithfulness that I have toward you because I love you. And in that, like, I could have just stopped and camped out in that all week and let that be our sermon. Just, just that one piece that if we go home and just count the Lord's faithfulnesses, Towards us, and I'm, I'm using it in the plural. You've probably never heard it in that English word because it's not an English word. But God's faithfulness is towards us that they are beyond anything that we could ever measure. And we could just fall back into his rest and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your faithfulness because you are faithful. You know, we, we live in many ways in a faithless age and in a faithless time. I think that's one reason why the draw can be so deep into this. Because we're all looking for something that we can invest into, that we can pour our whole lives into and know that it's not going to be in vanity or it's not going to betray us or it's not going to come back and say, I wish I hadn't given as much to that as I did. Anybody ever been in one of those situations, right? Where you invested yourself into something, right? And the return did not seem as great as it should have been with what you gave. Have we ever been there? It's okay. It's fair. That's the world we live in, right? The world's not a fair place, right? But with God and whatever we may choose to give over to him and pour out in our lives to him, for him, I'll tell you, you will never regret it because he is faithful, right? To pour back in immeasurably more whatever we may give. We can't outgive God. We can't outgive God. Amen, Cindy. You can't do it. You can't do it. But we should seek to. We should certainly seek to. So this idea, of, the idea, not just idea of faithfulness, but the reality of faithfulness in God. There, there's, again, so much that could be comprehended. Just in Matthew chapter 5 alone, when you step into the Beatitudes, great portion of scripture. There are a few examples we could draw out towards God's faithfulness just in those verses. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 4, it says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. It also says in the Psalms that God is near those who are, in the, are brokenhearted. Right? He's with you in your distress, with you in your sorrow. No matter how overwhelming or hard it may be, he's near because he is faithful. How about this one? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Isn't that an absolute truth? 
as you have given mercy and given it in the measure that God has led you to give it in, he has given it back to you. And man, he's given us a good word in that. Where his disciples asked him, Lord, how much, how much should we forgive a wrong done to us? And they say, seven times? Should, should we just say, that, that, that should be enough, right? Seven times you've been wronged. You forgive it. That should be it. The, the, the line is drawn. And Jesus expresses his nature in his faithfulness and forgiveness. And he says, no, no, not seven times. Seven times 70. And that doesn't mean 490 times, right? Where you start clocking it. Some of us could, oh, I got 490. You're done. <laughs> right? No, no. The, it, the, what's communicated there, seven times 70, are numbers of completion, of fullness, of never endingness, right? And that is God's mercy toward us. And we're commended in Scripture to forgive as we have been forgiven, lest we not be forgiven. Right? So as we seek the Lord's mercy, He is merciful, He is faithful in His mercy toward us. How about this one? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, I can't speak for every person in here and what that may even mean to you. What does it mean to see God, right? Oh, man, I'll tell you, in case you didn't know, you're seeing him this morning. You're seeing him in the rising of the sun, right? In the coming forth of the moon, even in the evening. You're seeing him in our midst this morning as you're hearing his word spoken and his faithfulness to allow his word to be declared so that you may know it, so that you may know the truth, and so that the truth may set you free. God is good. God is faithful. We, we don't have to have that, you know that, right? Craig prayed earlier, God, thank you that we live in a nation where we can congregate and gather in this manner openly. There isn't that freedom everywhere, right? It, to, the, to the measure that we have it here. And God is faithful to provide that here. And I gotta say, we gotta remember our brothers and sisters, our martyrs, right? Who are putting themselves at risk in the church on the other side of the country. God is faithful to them. As they gather, he is in their midst. And I'm a little bit envious because I can only imagine what it's like to be there in his presence the way they are. Because they're like, Lord, we're literally risking our lives so we can be with you. Would you show up today? Oh man, that's gotta be some church, right? And even if something did happen to our brothers and sisters and we pray with in all our hearts that it didn't, but we, we are in an evil this world, but God is faithful to deliver that even if evil came in to kill and steal and destroy, that God, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can put our hope and our faith in him because he is faithful to deliver us, even from death. Even from death, because he conquered it. Man, there's some good stuff in here right now, right? God is good. God is faithful, right? You say, yeah, God is good, right? And all the time, God is good, and we should shout that. We should lift up a praise because of his faithfulness, that just as God is love, right? He is the definition of it, and God is truth, right? And how full, he is full of grace and truth, we're told in John chapter 1, verse 14. This is true too, church. This is just as much an attribute of him as the others, that God is Faithful. God is faithful. He is the full expression and definition of it. And so we praise him. And so we should praise him. And again, so no doubt, and I'm, I'm saying this a, a number of times for a reason. That it's countless. The faithfulnesses of God are countless. It says in Psalm chapter 92, verse 2, it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to thy name, O Most High, to declare thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness by night. 
question, and not just a question for, for you, a question for me. Are we doing that? Are we declaring the loving kindnesses and the faithfulness of God? And declaring means that outspoken, that we see just how much God has poured into our lives and how much mercy is there and present and available. And we, y'all are getting me tripped up here with my arms open and wide, I'll tell you right now. I, I'm seeing about 50 of you right now counting these. Because, okay, that was number 48. So that's what. We're not that high yet. Okay, I'm getting there. Getting close. I'm getting close. All right. Good. Oh, let's get back to it. Yeah, you all ready? Going back to it. But declaring, declaring, what does that mean? To be outspoken about it. That when you see and you, and you feel, Feel and you know that the goodnesses of God and the immeasurablenesses that they are, that you just, something wells up in you. And you begin to say, I, I can't keep it in anymore. Do you know how good God is? Cindy, do you know? Do you know? You know? Uh, uh, right? And you absolutely, but at the same time, no, you don't. You don't, because they're too good. God is too good, immeasurably good. You know, and that, so that welling up, and are we declaring Him? Right? By night and by day. Uh, our children were just in here a moment ago. Are they hearing out of our mouths and out of our lips and seeing it exit through in our lives that God is good. God is faithful. It, that means so much, not just to them to hear those words, but to the Lord to know that you're saying them of Him. Christian, Christian, God is faithful. God is faithful. <laughs> Okay? Good. Amen? Declare it. Declare it to the children. Declare it in your midst. Say it right now. God is good. Right? Declare His praises. God is good. You know, and, and we can think about this even historically in, in who God is. Because we can reach back years upon years in history. Biblical history. Where there was a point in which... There was a great flood which hit the earth. A terrible devastation, right? But even that, in the end of it, it pointed to God's faithfulness. Because after Noah was delivered from the flood and came out of the boat, God came to Noah. And he spoke to him. And he said, Noah, I'm never going to destroy the world again in the measure that it was destroyed here in this moment of history. And I set my bow in the sky. Right? The rainbow as a sign of the covenant and saying it will never again happen this way. And for as long as that rainbow has been showing, we have never seen a flood. Right? There's never been a flood. I shouldn't say we've never seen. Did anybody see the flood with their eyes? No. Okay, we're not that old. Right? But there's never been a flood like that to that, to that level. Here's another one to Abraham. When, when God was establishing his covenant with Abraham... He said to him, Abraham, look up at the stars. All right. And at this point being, Abraham still hadn't even had a son. Right. And he said, count the stars, Abraham. So shall your descendants be one day. Right. And it's one of those things where you look, okay, one man, how old is he? He's obviously not going to have that many children. Right. But he had one son, son of the promise, who was Isaac. And then through Isaac, the, t the 12 tribes of Israel were born. And then that stretched out, right? And, but still even, that probably wasn't at a point where you can't even number it like the stars in the sky. Because God's promise was fulfilled to Abraham in showing his faithfulness. And that who also became the children of Abraham? Through Jesus Christ. What did Paul say? He who is a Jew is not one outwardly, but inwardly. Through a declaration of faith in Jesus Christ. You call on the name of the Lord to be saved. You are now a son of or daughter of Abraham. Isn't that cool? Oh, and now we've really hit God's promise. Because who can number that? Who can count it? Nobody. Nobody is countless as the stars in the sky. And these are just two examples where you can look back in history and say, God spoke it. He made a promise. And he was faithful to it. That's what faithfulness is, isn't it? I mean, for me, to be faithful to Joanne, I said 15 years ago, 
getting closer to 16 years ago. How do we get this old? Right? How do we get this old? Sitting near 16 years ago, I said, I'm going to be faithful to you till death do us part. Right? I'm in this. And in order for that promise, then that faithfulness to be fulfilled, I have to be in it. Right? And dedicated in it in order to be faithful. And that's who God is too. Right? He's like, once you step into relationship with me, I'm all in. And I showed that to you on the cross. Gave my life so that I can live with you. Man, isn't he good? Isn't he good and isn't he faithful? Those are only two examples of thousands of others that could be drawn out from scripture. His faithfulness is present today. Thy faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Thou didst establish the earth and it stands. Is the earth standing today? Guess why? Because God has been faithful to continue in that as well, right? Just the fact that the world exists today, when how many of us have thought, this place should have been done 20 years ago, right? Aren't we finished yet? And God says, no, no, I have established things in my time, in my plans, in my ways, and I am gonna be faithful to what I'm gonna accomplish in that. Because I am faithful, says the Lord. Amen? 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 God keeps his promises. If you don't take all the words from this sermon, I pray the Spirit is just speaking to you as it's speaking to me, and you're grabbing some stuff, and the Holy Spirit's like, hold on to that. Hold on to that. You know, hold on to this one. God keeps his promises. He is faithful. And he establishes his promises. And here's what we can ask. To what depth? You guys remember the song we were singing earlier? Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his what? Word. Just to take him at his word. How deep does the promises and the faithfulness go? Deeper than we could ever imagine. Because when God makes a promise, and when God says, I will be faithful to this, here's what he does. Uh, turn with me, if you'd like, to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13. And here's what it reads. It says, for when God, going back to Abraham, made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. He said, I will do it. I am putting myself investing into the promise that I am handing over to you. And if you're not aware of the covenant promises that came to Abraham, I believe, I can be inaccurate sometimes in my text, but I'm quite certain God's promises came to Abraham in Genesis 12 and Genesis 15, of which they were fulfilled. He was faithful to fulfill them. And when he swore to Abraham, he said, I'm swearing it to you. You can count on me that I will follow through with all with all of his might and all of his strength the Lord put himself into it you know this reminds me of times even where uh, anybody ever get a haircut here right I like to bring in connections that we can all share it doesn't look like there isn't anybody who's never had a haircut in here right so we can all relate but how many of you have ever forgotten your wallets when you went to get a haircut and then you said Cindy saying nope lost me here Josh not me. Well, I have more than once. And there are times that where I had my ID in my wallet. I remember I had my high school ID. And I, I said to the Supercuts barber at the time, I said, uh, I left my wallet at home. I can't pay you right now. Now, Supercuts is a franchise. So you don't mess with these people, right? <laughs> Franchises got power. They'll cut your hair, but if you don't pay them, they'll cut you. Right? <laughs> That could be a tagline, maybe, for franchise haircutters, right? And I said, look, <laughs> terrible tagline. Yeah, I think it's great. I'm going to go market with that. But I, I went into a barbershop once, and I didn't have money to pay. And so what did I say that you know, I, I could give them? I reached into my pockets, and all I had was my high school ID. And I said, look, can, 
can I give this to you as collateral? At least just so you know who I am. I, I know you don't have much reason to trust me or know if I'll be faithful to my promise to, to come back and pay you, but can I just, can I give this to you and you got something, you know who I am, so you can turn me into local authorities if I try and steal a haircut? No. Okay, I was a young lad at the time, you know, who could forget things, you know. And, and but I'm, I'm drawing out of this, this idea, you know, that I, in that moment, I gave something to this individual. I was like, I don't, I don't have much to give, but what I can give you is my ID, and this is the best I can give to you as a promise, and it's saying I'm faithful to the commitment that I'm going to pay you. So you're probably wondering if I did or didn't pay them, aren't you? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> she may still have that ID to this day. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't on the background, I'll tell you, too sneaky. No, but, but I gave a promise by, by my name, right? In, in saying, I want to be faithful to this. And we're told in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13, that when God makes his promise, because he can swear by no one greater, he swears by himself. And isn't it awesome, church? And everybody listening, whether you consider yourself part of the church or not, that he showed up, right? What did, what did, what did the prophets say, you know, that would come into the lives of men through the promised Messiah, salvation and rescue? And the Lord said, I promise that you're going to have it. And he showed up in his name, in Jesus' name, the Messiah come to redeem the world. He is faithful to his promises, and he will show up to fulfill them. You know, and it's awesome. There are many names for God. You know that? Just in the Jehovah categories, there's Jehovah Jireh, which is connected to faithfulness. My provider, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. Y'all heard that one? It's a good song. We should do that on a Sunday. Right? But his grace is sufficient for me. And one of the names of God in the Hebrew is Ha'el Hane Eman. I'll say it again. Ha'el Hane Eman. Now don't tell me, ask me whether or not that's actually accurate to the Jewish way that they say it. I think they say a K hey in there whenever they do their H's, right? But what does that mean? And pay attention to the last part of that name, Eman, Eman. It is the root word behind this name, also Eman, which is close to what? Who said it? Amen, Jack, Amen. And who knows? Man, see, the children are being instructed. Yes! Praise God. Thank you, Jack. I heard somebody else say it too, but you're an adult, so not as impressive. <laughs> but amen. Amen. And who knows what amen means? You can say it if you're an adult. I won't. Do we know what it means? What does amen mean? May it be. Let it be done. Right? And that is connected to faithfulness, even in the very name of God, right? Who is faithful. He is, he is, I, mean, I better look at it to make sure I get it right. Ha'el Hane Eman. He is the God of Amen. The God of fulfilled promises. Man, that is good. So Amen, let it be done. He is faithful to complete in accordance with His will and his goodness, and he is good. Know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps his covenant and his loving kindness to a thousandth generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. Today I ask us this question, how well do you know that God is faithful? You see, you can know just in reading this, just in opening up the book of promise and saying promises will be fulfilled and saying, whoa, do you guys remember that? Just in December, right? We, we went through the series Gifts from Above. And what were one of those gifts that we centered on? The, the gifts of prophetically fulfilled ministry that's like this literally impossible for man to have done it in the way it was fulfilled. 
but it was. Why? Because God is faithful. You know, and the more you know God, the more you know Him, the more you're going to fall in love with Him and His faithfulness. One thing I love about my wife, Joanne, is that specific characteristic, faithfulness. You know, we actually have a sign near our, our, our bed on our uh, bed stand that says, I love you more. Now, sometimes we'll make a competition of it. <laughs> who loves who more, right? And whoever does, you're better than me, right? Right? But this idea of I love you more, man, 15, nearing 16 years that Joanne and I, and I have been together, and we've had that, that sign sitting next to our bed for three of them now, I think, at this point. And the idea behind that is actually more so this, not competition, but one that as I get to know Joanne more and, and fully invested in that relationship, and you can, you can you know, draw this into friendship or whatever relationships you have that you're really pouring yourself into, Right? The more I get to know Joanne, the more I begin to say, oh my goodness, I didn't know that about you. That's awesome. You know what? I love you even more. And each day that love grows in knowledge and in truth and in faithfulness and in joy. Come and give me a hug. Just give me a hug. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, I love you more. <laughs> but I love you more, you know? And the greatest relationship that we could ever invest ourselves into is what relationship? The one with Jesus Christ, who is ever faithful, who loves us more than we could ever know. And so as it goes, that the more I know Joanne, the more I understand her love and faithfulness toward me, the more I fall in love with her. And so it is with Jesus Christ. That the more you know him, the more you can fall in love with his truth and him being the truth. The more you can fall in love with his grace because he's given so much. And the more you can fall in love with his faithfulness because he is forever faithful. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today, yes, and forever. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Dwell on that scripture, brothers and sisters. He will never change. He will never be unfaithful. And we're even told in scripture that even if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. He is unchanging. We can stand upon his promises and we can make him the bedrock foundation of our lives because of who he is. The rock, it says in scripture, the rock, his work is perfect. Amen? His work is perfect for all his ways are just. A God of faithfulness without injustice, righteous and upright is he. Seek faithfulness. Let love lead in faithfulness, just as he is faithful. And as we prepare now in closing, in dwelling upon the goodness and the faithfulness of God, do you know what Sunday it is? It's Communion Sunday. Our Lord was faithful to show up, faithful to give his life. It's just one of those things that can continually blow one's mind every time we think about it, right? While we were yet sinners, Christ came and died for us because he is faithful. And today, together as a church body, we declare his death, declare his life which was given for us. That his faithfulness is so great and so deep that it means even his own spilt blood and broken body. <coughs> Woe is me. 
woe is me. Can we not echo the words of Isaiah? That there is the presence of God in that, the presence of God in communion. <coughs> and we receive this. We prepare our hearts and our mind to receive this because, because of his faithfulness. Amen, church? Let us prepare our hearts to receive communion. Father, we love you because you first loved us. And out of that love, it comes from faithfulness, for you are faithful. Lord, we are so undeserving, yet you look upon us and say, no, it's not about what you deserve. It's just about how much I love you and how much I want to be with you and what I'd be willing to give to make it happen. And Lord, that declaration is made even in giving yourself, dying for us, so that we may be with you, that we may live with you. So Lord, center our hearts right now into a place of right posture and giving you thanks for your faithfulness, giving you thanks for the cup and the bread, Lord, in declaring your death. And we give you praise that we are able in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ushers, if